Attention, attention, starting, drove his chair. Hi guys, uh, my name's Spencer, I'm the lead de-icer here at Falls Creek, and we're just going to talk about a few of the reasons on why we de-ice, um, and also a few things to look out for when we're climbing up those lift towers. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to look at is uh, this here, this is a sheave, and most of the reasons why we de-ice is to make sure that these are spinning. Um, what can happen is as we get a big storm that comes in, a lot of ice can build up on our towers, and a join can form between uh, the sheave here and the actual tower, and that can cause the sheave to stick. So what we need to do is climb those lift towers and then de-ice these um, to get them spinning freely. As you can see, this whole side part here is all metal, but right in the middle, this is rubber here. Um, what can happen is if this is stuck and that cable of the chairlift is grinding over this rubber here, it can cause a flat spot, and then that can be... Uh, and that's going to need replacing eventually. So if you have a look at this sheaf here, this one has been stuck for a very long time. And as I roll this one around, you can see that there is a really substantial groove here. And then once this was freed, it would be then rotating around and you would get this big bumping uh, every time this sheaf would spin, which is uh, really not good. So um, this one needed to be replaced. Um, but you can see that this was been running for a very long time. So the cable is ground all the way down right through here. And you can see that that's taken a big chunk out of it. And that can be an expensive thing to replace as well. So if there are lots of sheaves that are missed, then, um, then that's a lot of money which is gonna uh, need to come out of the budget to then get this replaced. So um, that is basically why we de-ice. When we're de-icing, um, I probably, met, well I will mention it a few times about where we can and can't hit, but this part here, this is steel, so we can hit this quite hard, um, but not super hard. So we're going to make sure that we're hitting this here, 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 all the way around to try and clear any ice that's off here. But this inner part here, this is much more delicate. Um, so we're going to have to be really careful. If you look over at this part here, this is the inside part here, okay? And if you have a look right here, we have a pretty substantial crack. And that's because this has been hit by a de-ice hammer, which has then cracked this part of the sheet. And again, this would need to be replaced. Um, you can see there is a few minor dints and a little bit of wear here and there. Uh, that's okay, as long as it's, um, but it's far from ideal. So we want to make sure that um, when we're tapping this inner part of our sheaf, that it is really gentle. Um, sometimes even using the back of our hammer instead of the hammer head. Alright, moving on to uh, a few of the things to look out for when we're up towers. The first one is this here. This is called a brake fork. And these forks here are used so that if the cable was to derail off a sheave, it would break this fork here, therefore stopping the lift. You can see that there is a little weak spot just here. Um, this is on all of our Doppelmeyer lifts, so uh, that is, you know, FEX, uh, Scotts, Castle, and also Summit, and Monkey Bar. So all of these here have brake forks, but all the other lifts have their own uh, different ways of stopping that lift if it was to derail. The second thing, which you'll see when we're out on International, is this thing here, this is called a spar switch. And this will be connected to a little black wheel. So that wheel will run along the cable, but if that cable was to fall off or derail, uh, that wheel would fall down or maybe get pulled up and trip this switch here. Um, this is a relatively easy one to fix. If that was to, to uh, if you were to maybe move that black wheel, all you would have to do is re-flick this switch here and that would um, reset any fault that we would have on the tower. Another one here, this is called a brittle butt, and this is from our tower's chairlift. And this one here, this would be sitting along here just like this, and then if this cable was to derail off the sheaves, it would then pull this bar out from here, and that would break our circuit. So to reset this, all we would need to do is line up this little uh, divot here, right in the middle, and then push quite hard. 
and that resets it here as well. The last uh, piece of equipment which you might need to be wary of on a tower is also called a brittle bar. And these ones here are on our new Eagle chairlift and also Drovers. Um, these would be set up just like this, so if the cable was to derail off this sheet, it would then break this part right here on this weakness. Now these are a little more involved to actually replace, um, so often uh, it might be maybe myself or maybe even maintenance that would come and try and replace these. These can also be pretty expensive too. Um, each of these go for nearly $160 each. So uh, try and be really careful where you swing your hammers, particularly when you're up drovers and eagle. All right, to finish up, I'm definitely one to have a really hands-on approach to things. I like to uh, touch all the different things and that's how I learn the best. And I know a lot of other people out there are the same. So uh, if you're ever curious about any of this equipment or you're having questions and things like that, feel free to come into Mountain Office. We always keep a few spares of these and the sheaves lying around the back. That way we can always try and explain to people in the best way and then that way they can actually see uh, what it looks like and feel it and then that way they know how to identify any of these things when they're up a tower.